of Mekong logistics of uh, Vietnam. So, um, any one of you have been in Vietnam? Just raise your hand. One, two, three, ten, fifteen, twenty, around thirty percent. Okay. So, how you feel about Vietnam? Uh, we are a state development country. We look like Thailand 30 years ago, right? So last year I made a lot of investors from Thailand, from Japan, go to Vietnam, explore the market, especially in the whole chain. So um, I have been in, uh, have opportunity to, to meet them, discuss, and now I'm here to, to, to share the case of Mekong Logistics. This is not uh, only a, a post for facility, but of a total uh, logistics center that including the cold storage, Indian warehouse, uh, container depot, and a port, fully at one size. So, firstly, let me uh, capture overview about the Vietnam Putin market. So, this is a statistic uh, report about the demand of the market. You may see that about 80% of, of cargo in Putin are seafood. Okay, seafood here. The other, like fresh, processed vegetables and fruits, then dairy products and meat. Uh, the figure show or uh, tell us something about the Vietnam. We are the mainly export country of fish and shrimp. Annual export now about 8 billion of fish and shrimp, and in that shrimp account for about 3 billion USD. Uh, in uh, from 2010 to 2013, you may see that the trade are increasing and frozen shrimp account for about more than 30% in terms of value. Okay. So overall, the supply of the cold chain facility in Vietnam are also just increasing. So you may see early uh, 1995, Vietnam just joined, uh, just had bilateral relationship with the US. Then other um, FBI are coming, Procter Gamble, Unilever, Kendrick Clark start uh, getting the market around here. They almost, almost no uh, coaching facility about 20 years ago. So now, 2015, is it about nearly uh, 350,000 square meter of cold storage facility in Vietnam. You may see the bombing happened after 2007 when Vietnam joined the WTO. More investment come uh, from Korea, from US, uh, from Japan. Last year, just um, Two coal facility are uh, launched in Vietnam. One is CLK. This is John Bender between k and some other food Japan and other investor. The second is um, the uh, Sojit, John Bender with a local partner named Liu Lang. Uh, they have about 10,000 square meters of coal storage. So this figure in 2017 is around nearly 450,000 square meters, okay? So, uh, mainly in Vietnam, we are a long country like this, and the key area of cold chain are in the south. The, north, the south account for about, I think, 80 to 90 percent of supply cold storage. Uh, the north are uh, part of that. So, in the south, major cold storage facility located around Ho Chi Minh City, Bingville, and Domain, the key economic development area in Mekong Delta, not, not so much. But this area, this area is the main location to produce fish and shrimp to the world. So, around the sea, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, Sejun, Donai, there are about, at our specific, about 15 companies. So the biggest player in the market is why why come from Australia. Now they have about nearly 50,000 square meters of cold storage, very modern. The second is preferred, 
they have AS RS system, very modern warehouse uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. And the other are local company or joint venture. So overall, Vietnam need more and more modern warehouse poster like this. So overall, I think Vietnam demand of um, post stories are still increasing. Consumer about 95,000, 95 million consumer. Uh, there are more and more cargo import and export. Then opportunity are still growing. That's why many investors from Japan, from Korea, from Thailand, Taiwan, come to Vietnam. So, talk about Mekong Delta, a very special area. Mekong Delta. Uh -huh. Maple Delta, you see the photo? Many, many uh, channel, panel along with the land. The population about nearly 20 million, uh, one fifth of the country. The GDP contribution also about 20%. And uh, the GDP grow rate, 9 to 10%, versus average of the country about 6%. So the grow rate are quite good. Uh, the, the key thing of this area is the consumption uh, very good. People in the Kong Delta uh, used to spend um, most of their income for, for spending, they're not saving much. So the consumption market is big. And in the region, two uh, key business, uh, aquatics, rice, uh, fruit, are three key uh, main driver for the economic of the region. In our profit, uh, now we raising the volume of farm uh, in trade and fish. You see the growth. They account for about 60 to 70 percent of production. So make sure it's a stable and sustainable uh, supply. So the so the beautiful thing here in this slide. Uh, there are two separate areas. This is Mekong Delta. This is the we call the eastern area. So, eastern area is main supply of uh, consumer goods, uh, fertilizer to Mekong Delta. And from Mekong Delta, we provide uh, rice, uh, seafood to exchange with the the big area. So it's a whole way of, of transportation. And the, the key thing is there no connection, no integration yet. So not not clearly. So annually about uh, 10, 10 million tons of cargo from activity back to Mekong Delta and around uh, six or seven million tons of, the, of consumption put back to here and supply from here to this area. So if we can integrate the cargo flow from both regions, we can provide a better logistic solution to client. And mainly, road transportation account for 60%, which is uh, more cost versus uh, by by uh, uh, by So we see opportunity there, and there the infrastructure in the Mekong Delta is still at low level, a lack of integration. And uh, the cargo source, the waste after harvest up to 20%. So nearly the, the figure that uh, Mr. Panta share, the rate of waste around 20-30% after harvest. So opportunity there for us to provide the specific. Here is a photo of a current post-storage policy facility in Hunter in the Delta. You can see there are no racking, no pilot, cargo loaded from floor to the roof. And the uh, employee handling manually is back. Very manual, very hard to, to control, cannot traceable, a lot of issues, right? Currently, it happened currently. So, another opportunity why we're doing that is the uh, there are two main rivers in the Mekong Delta. One is Yang 
and the other big uh, point how yeah okay this big uh, connect to the sea a very low track so big vessel cannot get in this way so the government invest in a project called Quan Chan Bo Panel. They did a panel along this province so that big vessel can get in the, the big river here. So we can leverage the shipping transportation rather than road transportation. And that for the reason that we call it. In Mekong Delta, sorry, the slide is very blur. But basically in Mekong Delta, there are two region the near the sea are on trim manufacturers and the area here are for fish fish production. So we target our higher national exporter here and also the consumer good for the, the the south of the whole river, whole area. So how we do that? Here the overall we try to combine the transportation between two regions cargo in and cargo out and we provide a high standard of quality in its logistics. This uh, photo gives you a clear view. So overall for CBCT here, the main port now is Kaplan Port. So our project in Hau Yang province that next to Kang He and the distance from our project to other province just within four hours of road transportation. And we can leverage the sea, uh, the, the, the river to connect to both sides. From here to Cambodia, from here we can through the Quang uh, Bok Canal to go directly to the climate area. We save a lot of cost of transportation. And from here we distribute the consumer goods to the whole uh, province around. So here is our project. This is the road, road map road, uh, uh, around the area and just last October, the first vessel uh, rolled through the white panel. This vessel carry about uh, 7 GU uh, container to get in the, the panel to confirm the connection are not ready. So our cargo can be leveraged for shipping and road transportation. And of course, we want to export our product back to the north, to um, Malaysia or Singapore, or directly to uh, Hong Kong or Taiwan before we go to other areas. So this is the total view of the project. This is um, we call a two three year project. The first phase of the project is the coaching. Um, for four four point eight eight bar about forty. 7,200 pallet location in nine block and we are in operation from uh, October October 2016 the next we will build the depot here the depot are around 5 hectares and then we build 2 ambient DC number 2 here 2 ambient are uh, about 40,000 pallet square meter eight, and the the sea port, other uh, the river port here, uh, up to 20,000 dead weight ton uh, vessel can get in. So totally, the whole project, we expect full operation in 2019, can be a logistic hub for the whole region, both inflow and outflow cargo. The uh, appearance of the the project of the coal chain and next by just about 500 meters in Minpu Minpu Corporation is one of the biggest uh, shrimp manufacturers in the world they supply uh, to many countries and in their revenue up to 800 million USD okay so this location is the joint venture between with full cooperation and German Logistics, our common here, German Logistics. And we
supply at least 50% of the, the cost to supply for this big customer. And then we provide for other customers, then we expect the cold storage will be full by the end of this year. Now the site in operation we build uh, uh, Proud and Toyota Ebechi and uh, we do wrecking, uh, we do barcode, we do import, import at the PMS, barcode printer, QD, so well integrated, we can track the motion, we can uh, visibility the operation in the, the warehouse. So we provide a wide range of services for our customers. Currently, in the region, customers have, uh, have to contact with many uh, suppliers, the warehouses, the transporter, the custom clearance. So now we integrate all of that in single size, so more convenient for customers, cost-saving and reliable partner. Uh, I forgot in, in two scenarios how we benefit to the customer. Before the project, before the project, customer have to send the cargo by by truck to cold storage near her to the city, and from then they transfer to the port like Kaplan port, and from Kaplan port they are sent to climate area, which take four five days or even ten days of the supply chain and costly to the client. When we uh, introduce the project, we will shorten the lead time about 30 to 40 percent. The cargo can easily deliver to our cold storage and from here we go directly to the, the international port like uh, Thailand area or uh, Hong Kong or Singapore and from there export to our customers. At the port of call, we will say we estimate about 20 to 30 percent saving to our customer by using our full service. This is uh, the first meal, and the second one, the the inflow cargo from uh, eastern area to western area. Currently, consumer good company has the same cargo to distributor in the region, and then from distributor they distribute to the outlet. So there are 13 provinces around the, the region and the distributor are small ones. So every time they play order, they just play small orders. And uh, manufacturer have to send the power in many small trucks because the size of the order is small. So it's hard and it takes time for the whole supply chain. So we introduced the ambient warehouse in the location. We try to leverage the whole uh, uh, the, the truck in return. From Pacific or the in return, we carry the power cheaper price, uh, good condition. We store in this location. Then we use smaller truck to distribute a distributor off or up to to outlet if it's near the project site. So we save the cost of set up the building, the warehouse. We save the part of transportation by leverage the return truck. So we believe this project type can add value to the consumer company in the eastern area. So total, in total, the project can support both you know, inflow and outflow of the cargo across the region. And this is uh, all about uh, Mekong Logistics Project. So, any question and I'm happy to, to share with you. Any? Fine, we're happy to pass it back. Okay, so um, if no questions, then we will have a uh, lunch break setting at the right corner. And please, uh, we have the feedback form then we have to, to fill it, okay? So um, in today's session, we have about um, nearly hundreds of uh, experts from many countries and from many different industries. And we, I think, I believe, two hours for the next working session will be a lot of great person. So have great networking lunch and see you by 2 p.m.
this afternoon. Thank you very much.